All right, welcome back to Laser Engraving 911. So before we get into this project where we're going to engrave some names and logos on these full whiskey bottles, I thought we'd do a little overview of engraving on glass with a CO2 laser in general. So here is a sample of a glass that I engraved with my logo. What I want you to notice here is the nice frosting around the engraving. There's no flakage going on. This is the, the ultimate look that we're going for when we engrave glass. There's a lot of different factors that go in to getting a good engraving with your CO2 laser on glass. It's not just about settings, it's also about the type of glass that you pick. A good rule of thumb is that the cheaper the glass, the better it engraves. Higher end glasses, wine glasses and things like that, the more expensive they get, they have a higher lead content and the engraving can be a little flaky. It cannot engrave with such a nice frosting like this one you see here. I thought it would be fun to talk about what's actually going on when your laser uh, is etching the glass. To the naked eye, when, when you give it to the customer, it just looks like a nice frosted laser etched glass. What's interesting is that you're actually not removing any material. You're only microfracturing the surface. And I thought it would be really cool to actually go in and show you up close what's actually going on when you laser engrave glass. We're going to look at this section, but we're going to look at it at 500 times. So here is that section of the last little slide that we just had at 500 times taken with a little digital microscope that I have here and I'll list a link in the description below. It's a really cool uh, thing I have in here in my shop. It allows me to check things out like this and look at other engravings up close. This is at 500 times and as you can see uh, there's not actually any material that was removed. There's just fracturing of the surface. So when the laser hits the glass, it's heating it up in a localized area. It's creating fractures on the surface of the glass. So now that we've taken a look at 500 times, let's go ahead and take a look at 1200 times. All right, here we go. So this is my favorite picture out of all this. Here is a little piece of that last slide that we were looking at, but really up close and you can really see those fractures going on. And when you apply too much heat uh, or too much power, what happens is, is those little fractures start to break off or break out. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. When you're figuring out your settings for laser engraving on glass, you're going to have to get some cheap glass to blow through until you get that, that great setting. Typically, you're going to want to be using maximum power and then your speed will be adjusted accordingly. And like I said before, you don't really want to go too much higher than 400 dots per inch or DPI. So now let's talk a little bit about dealing with heat when you're laser engraving glass on thin glasses. One of the things that I want you guys to understand is that when customers give you logos, different types of logos are going to produce more heat on the glass. And because of that, you need to be conscious of what's going to happen to the glass depending on how thin it is or how thick it is. So I've laid out a few logos with a very simple diagram. So this logo, this monogram right here, is obviously not going to produce so much heat into the glass because it's got very thin lines and the laser isn't concentrated in one area for a long time. Now, if the customer wants you to do this logo, you need to keep that in mind because the laser is going to be going back and forth or this way and this way many times over the same area, creating a lot of heat on the glass. And we're going to talk about how to deal with that. These are just some examples of one logo that produces a lot less heat on glass and then these kind of logos with a lot of fill on them will produce quite a bit of heat on the glass and you just need to be mindful of that. I'm not saying you can't do logos like this, you just need to be mindful that these type of big fill logos are going to generate a lot of heat on the glass. There is ways that you can deal with the heat being absorbed into the glass if you have a big fill logo like this. So let's go ahead and talk about that. But before we get into how to deal with heat on thin glass, we're gonna take a second and talk about Olight. 
Olight is the sponsor of this video and they make one of the sickest flashlights I have ever seen in my entire life and a lot of other stuff. So let's learn a little bit more about Olight and then we'll get back to the tutorial and talk about how to deal with heat on thin glass. Are you ready to uncover a hidden world that's invisible to the naked eye? Introducing the Artfeld UV flashlight, your gateway to a whole new level of discovery. Whether you're a professional in need of a reliable tool or an adventure seeker looking for exciting discoveries, the Artfeld UV flashlight is here to illuminate your path. There are many other flashlights in my arsenal, but none is like the Artfeld. Unlock the mysteries that lie beneath the surface with the Artfeld UV flashlight. Alright, so one of my favorite ways to deal with heat when laser engraving on thin glass is Dawn dish soap. It's that simple, folks. The only thing that I have to say about this is if you've got some really thin, expensive glass or something that's you're just not sure the thickness of it is kind of making you nervous or you've got a large fill area. One of the best ways to displace and disperse that heat on the glass when you're laser engraving it is to put a thin layer of Dawn dish soap in the area that you're going to be working. You don't need to cover the whole glass and you definitely don't want to get any of the dish soap uh, near the drive wheels on your rotary tool because that will make the glass slip. Uh, even if you have a, a clamp in there, you definitely don't want to get any dish soap on your wheels. So keep that in mind. Um, but it really just takes a really thin layer. It doesn't hurt the engraving at all. And it just washes right off uh, with water afterward. I've been using the dish soap method for years now when I'm, <clears throat> you know, a little nervous about the glass that I'm going to etch or the graphic has a large fill area. It's, it's kind of acts like a heat sink and uh, keeps the surrounding glass cool. This is what works for me. This is what I've been doing for years and it works great. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look over at the project that we're actually going to go over and do in the workshop here in a second and I'll show you how I laid everything out and talk a little bit more now that we've gone through the basics about <clears throat> laser engraving on full bottles of liquid or full bottles of whiskey, which is something I get asked to do quite often. All right, and here we go. So first things first, get your bottle in the laser, get your focus set up to the surface of the glass. Make sure that that is right on point. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm using a little bit of talc powder to put on the glass so I can see the red targeting laser better. This is a trick I've been using for a long time. So then I use my trace box that we made over an illustrator to make sure that I'm nice and lined up on the bottle. And then what I'm doing here is I'm measuring the center point of the face of the bottle. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a jig of sorts because this bottle has a taper to it and I want to be able to slide parts of the jigs to adjust for the taper. And then I'm using my red trace again to make sure I'm still lined up after putting it in that jig because I have three bottles to do. So I built this so I could just easily put the next bottle in. Finally, before engraving, you want to check your work one more time just to make sure nothing shifted. And then we go ahead and run the job. And one of the great things about these whiskey bottles is that most of the time they're made out of cheap glass and cheap glass engraves better than expensive glass and you don't have to worry about the liquid inside catching on fire you just have to make sure you've got your good standard glass setting and you'll get a nice frosted beautiful mark on these whiskey bottles 